Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here at the press conference on Thursday. Uh, my name is Alan Harris. I'm the emergency manager here in Seminole County. Before I get into the COVID-19 response, I want to give a small recap on the event that happened uh, last week, the tornado uh, that occurred, I'm sorry, earlier this week, a uh, tornado that occurred here in Seminole County. The National Weather Service in Melbourne came over to uh, view the area to see if they could find any damage. We also had, of course, the helicopter up in the air. Based on the radar from the meteorologist, they said it looked like similar to 1998's tornado on the radar, which was an EF2 tornado. Uh, luckily, it looks like this particular event hit Lake Jessup, uh, meaning that it is a water spout. Uh, and then, uh, of course, once it hit land, it did become a tornado. By that time, it was an EF0 and quickly went up into the, uh, into the clouds. So, uh, as I had mentioned uh, at our last press conference, we were truly blessed that day. Uh, I didn't know how much we were blessed that day until after the, uh, the information from the meteorologist on their radar and then on uh, what they visually saw out there. So, uh, we definitely uh, dodged a bullet for those that were around during uh, the 1998 event. Uh, you, you know you, exactly what I'm talking about. So, God truly blessed us on that day. So let's get into the COVID-19 response. Over the last uh, few days, unfortunately, we have to report that we now have seven deaths here in Seminole County related to uh, COVID-19. Uh, the current total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 since the onset of this event is 339. So it has gone up a, a little since our last press conference. Uh, 16 of those cases are currently hospitalized. And that has been staying relatively consistent. We've been looking at the hospitalizations of Seminole County residents in Seminole County hospitals, and that has been remaining relatively constant throughout the event. And of course, uh, testing. Uh, we continue to have the 22 testing sites uh, that are available here in the county that includes the hospitals, standalone uh, emergency rooms, as well as the urgent care centers. Uh, earlier this week, of course, we started our pop-up test sites, and those were in targeted neighborhoods, uh, lower income, underserved communities, uh, where we wanted to provide enhanced testing for those residents. Some of those residents have uh, issues with transportation, uh, have a challenge getting to the other sites, so we wanted to make it very easy and available for them. Uh, we are doing nasal swabs at those sites, and I want to thank uh, True Health, which has been doing uh, all of the medical work out there, as well as the Florida Department of Health, uh, which has been helping with the logistics, as well as the Emergency Management Office, uh, to make sure that those sites are, are set up and ready to go. And of course, the Seminole County Sheriff's Office for, for providing uh, traffic uh, support there at the sites. Uh, the nasal swabs are administered on the sites, and the results can uh, be returned within anywhere between two and uh, two days and a week. So uh, we're expecting to get some of those results back relatively soon. So we'll start to see some good numbers uh, related to testing shortly. Uh, at those sites, there is no charge. Uh, we are asking individuals if they have medical insurance to bring the medical insurance card. There is no copay, uh, but we are asking uh, the medical insurance, if you have medical insurance to bring it, and that will help re -help, uh, recoup some of the costs for the nonprofit, again, True Health, which is doing some of these, uh, these are doing all of these tests. Uh, please bring an identification card with you. Uh, Walk-ups are available there. Patients do not have to exhi exhibit symptoms at these sites, so you can just come up, uh, just say that you're interested in, uh, in the test and we will give you a test. No appointments are necessary. The uh, locations are available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. At the end of the day, each day we assess uh, the amount of individuals that have gone through, and we will make a determination if we need to come back to that particular neighborhood or not. Uh, on, I'm very, very happy. Uh, the first day, we, we saw 239 individuals. That's um, amazing for four hours of work. Uh, so the nurses and the medical staff out there just did an incredible job, and that was in East Altamont. Yesterday, uh, we did 280 tests uh, in Midway. So they, uh, they upped the numbers even. Uh, for yesterday, just an incredible amount of work for four hours. Today, 340 tests uh, in Goldsboro. So just an incredible amount of work 
uh, out there. So I, my hats are uh, off to uh, the folks out at Goldsboro, uh, True Health, again, in Florida Department of Health. Um, tomorrow's site, uh, which is at, uh, was scheduled for Journeys Academy at, at Lincoln Heights and Lockhart, uh, has been postponed. We are expecting some inclement weather this evening and into tomorrow. Uh, so it will be tagged on to the very last day of the event. So it will take place next Thursday. All of the other days uh, for next week are, are scheduled just like they were. So Monday we will be in Bookertown. Uh, Tuesday we will be in Georgetown at the stadium, the Sanford Stadium. And Wednesday, we will be in Jamestown at the Rock Hill Missionary Baptist Church, and we want to thank uh, them for their partnership. I'm extremely uh, happy today to report uh, the largest logistics, uh, 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 large logistics push in Seminole County history. Uh, today, we delivered 67,400 masks to uh, 77 assisted living facilities and nursing homes all this morning. Uh, though that will uh, that amount of masks, ma masks will uh, uh, be for 15 uh, days uh, for each patient that is in those facilities. So each patient now has 15 days worth of masks. Today we're receiving N95 masks, and those N95 masks will be pushed out to medical staff of assisted living facilities and nursing homes with known COVID-19 or suspected COVID-19. Uh, patients in their facilities, and we'll be pushing that out tomorrow. So an incredible amount of personal protective equipment coming into our site and then being pushed out immediately uh, to the assisted living facilities and uh, in our community. 67,400 again masks delivered to 77 assisted living facilities and nursing homes today alone. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Chairman Zimbauer uh, for some additional comments. Thank you, Alan, and, and thank you to all of your staff at the Emergency Management that are doing fantastic work on behalf of the citizens of the county. I would like to thank the uh, seven cities, the Board of County Commissioners, and, and let's thank the heroes, the health care workers, those essential employees that through all of this have now going on a month and a half showing up and doing the things that need to be done to make sure that our county continues to run as good as it possibly can. I know a lot of people are getting cabin fever, a lot of angst of you know, when we're going to open, how things are going to open, so we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But what I want to share with you today is the new dashboard that we've unveiled here at Seminole County. The dashboard is, uh, has been put together by our county staff. This will allow you as a citizen, business owner, to be able to go to the website and quickly see at a glance what is going on throughout the county as far as the number of tests that have been run, the number of uh, positive tests, how the trends are, are going, hospital capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. It's always been a key point here in, in Seminole County with the group to make sure that we try to provide as much information as we possibly can. Some of that information is you know, brought over from the Department of Health and we integrate that into this dashboard. So if you want to get to this dashboard at any time, prepareseminole.org. At the very top of the page, on the, on the home page, you'll see a banner. If you click on it, you will see the new COVID dashboard, which will show you the heat map and much uh, additional information. So let's talk about reopening. And again, I understand, you know, a lot of business owners, employees, uh, you know, I, I hate to continue to say it, there's been a lot of economic pain inflicted on our business community uh, and those employees of those businesses. That said, we are in a health crisis. We've got to be patient. We've got to take it slow. We've got to be smart about how things go and how we get back to work. Here in Seminole County, we will follow not only the federal but state guidelines. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. As those guidelines come down, you've heard the President's Task Force and the CDC have already given guidelines. We're now seeing some of the states around the country uh, that are about to open. Uh, our governor here in Florida has not yet made that announcement. Once the governor does make that announcement, then we will be in a position with our task force to take that information and see how that fits with Seminole County. So I want to share with you who sits on that advisory board and task force here in Seminole County. The executive policy group consists of myself as the chairman of the Seminole County Board of County Commission. It consists of our county sheriff, Dennis Lima. 
It also involves our medical director, Dr. Uh, Husty. It includes the Florida Department of Health Seminole Health Officer, uh, which is Donna Welsh, and also Seminole County Emergency Manager, which you've seen quite frequently here attending these press conferences, Mr. Alan Harris, as well as the rest of the county leadership, as well as the seven cities who continue to collaborate on what it will take to open this county and the cities uh, based on the information we receive you know, once the governor makes those announcements. We will try to do this smart. We will do this with the utmost care and consideration for the health of our entire public. We continue to get a lot of questions of, you know, what does it mean for my business or I've got this type of business. And the facts are we really don't know. Until the governor gives us that information and what his order is, then we will have to work within those parameters. And our goal is, is to do what's right, do it smart, and of course, we want to keep everybody healthy, but we also would like to get as many people back to work as we possibly can. But health is going to be the key, and we're going to watch the data and follow the numbers, and we'll be guided by that data. Also, uh, on the employment note, we are, are happy to announce that we have Pam Neighbors here today, the CEO from uh, Career Source, who's going to come up and talk to you a little about uh, you know, some employment opportunities and what goes on you know, during these times of uh, crisis and trouble. Pam, welcome. Thank you, Chairman. Hello, good afternoon. I am Pam Neighbors. I'm the President and CEO of Career Source Central Florida. We are the Regional Workforce Board that covers five counties around the City of Orlando and Seminole County is among them. We are very honored to be here this afternoon to talk to you about Career Source Central Florida's response to the COVID-19 crisis and we are working very hard for our community, our workforce and families during this unprecedented time. As I share with you the kinds of resources and services that we're able to provide, I want to be sure that you know that all of these services are available at our website, which is www.careersourcecentralflorida.com. And also, we have a contact center that you can reach um, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. The number is one 800 757 Four five nine eight. Someone is there to talk with you, an individual to support you in your career or job search. So since March 1st, um, Career Source Central Florida has experienced an 80% increase in customers. In Seminole County alone, we have helped over 3,400 individuals with job search. And job search assistance is a number of different things, including updating a resume, updating a LinkedIn profile, learning how to navigate the virtual environment for employment, interviewing skills, um, searching for jobs, individualized career counseling and career planning, job search and connection to businesses that are actually hiring, and also opportunities for upskilling and, and perhaps to work during this time in humanitarian outreach. 60% of our activity right now is in connecting individuals to open positions, and IT, manufacturing, construction, customer service are at the top of the list right now. Again, all of these services are available at our website or through contacting our contact center. We are also supporting the Department of Economic Opportunity in issuing paper unemployment or reemployment applications. And so we are replenishing those applications in front of our career source office on Airport Boulevard. To date, um, as of, uh, not to date, but I'm sorry, as of April 4th, the department has informed us that there are about 11,000 claimants in Seminole County specifically, and we're working to reach to those claimants and provide our services. We are able, though, to place individuals, and so uh, we've already seen several individuals placed in the construction industry as well as the contact center industry. Also important is that we have services to provide to the business community. So businesses are also seeking assistance during this time. We do have many businesses that are recruiting to support humanitarian and all kinds of outreach that you're hearing about, grocers, uh, call centers. Um, we are, for businesses, providing virtual job fairs, applicant screening, um, recruiting to support those positions, and in some cases, paid internships for individuals to be working um, while they are tried out, so to speak, at the business. 
So since March 1st, we have supported already 300 additional businesses and expect that to increase in Seminole County. Specifically, I've always asked who's hiring. And so here in Seminole County, we're currently recruiting actively for Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning, TBI Airport Management, SSP uh, North America, Remedy Intelligence Staffing, Alarica, they have hundreds of jobs available, Apple One Employment Services, Chase Bank, JP Morgan, Guidewell Florida Blue has 50 positions for customer care, and Central Florida Family Health Center for just a few to give you an idea of what we're recruiting for. Also, for individuals who are laid off, we have stood up a program for internships in humanitarian outreach. We're looking to actually hire um, in an internship at a $14 an hour wage, laid off workers who are interested in being drivers, for example, for delivering meals to seniors. We have a partnership with Four Roots Foundation, and we're looking also for partnerships with our senior centers and United Against Poverty and other nonprofit organizations who are supporting the humanitarian outreach. And we have allocated about a half a million dollars towards those internship wages in the next couple of months. Um, in Seminole, we have to date actually also put people into training programs at Seminole State College, and we're continuing to support those students and also place them if they've completed their training. For, for um, our new programs, actually, in direct response to the COVID-19 crisis, we have done a couple other new things. As I mentioned, we are, we are providing all of these services virtually. So even though our physical locations are closed, our career source, uh, career consultants, are available to provide one-on-one -on -one services to both career seekers and businesses. We're also launching virtual workshops in a number of different topics for both job seekers and businesses. So again, updating your resume, helping you practice virtual interviewing skills, refreshing skills, because many people have been out of the job market and need some support in looking at opportunities now. And then for businesses, many businesses are also learning to navigate virtual interviewing and virtual screening of applicants. And so if you're interested in these positions, again, I would direct you to our website, as I mentioned before. Um, and also for the internship, we actually have internship at careersourcecf.com. That's a website or an email address for both business and for job seekers. One last, um, actually two last things um, that we are doing is we are also launching a free online learning program. It's called Skill Up Central Florida. Again, it is available through our website. It is a partnership with Metrics Learning. There are over 5,000 courses in that program. There are courses from basic um, educational skills to actually project management and um, HR certifications. There are many, many different kinds of certifications, computer Microsoft certifications, and those are all available on our website and that's free to the public. And the last thing is in another week, we'll be launching a podcast called Career Source Central Florida Job Launchpad. And it will be directly talking about the services that I've mentioned this afternoon, as well as tips for who's hiring, interviewing uh, to-dos, and how to react, what to do first if your job is impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Last, I want to just mention we are continuing to recruit for our youth, our summer youth employment program. We're hoping to be able to launch that later in the summer. That is a program that allows young people 16 to 24 years old to actually work and learn work skills. It's in partnership with our colleges and our tech centers. And we're hoping uh, to be able to launch that, as I said, in July. And so again, at our website is the address for young people to sign up. And young people are being very affected during this crisis. Many of them are, are losing jobs in those uh, retail industries. So it's very important that they have an opportunity to um, be able to work. And so I think I've covered everything. Um, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, Chairman. And I'm going to turn it over to Bob Cortez. Thank you, Pam, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, and buenas tardes a todos. En este momento les daré un resumen de todo lo que se ha discutido hoy del condado de Seminole en español. Eh, primero que nada, el, el director de manejo de emergencia, Alan Harris, mencionó sobre eh, 
los efectos de la tormenta que sucedió la semana pasada aquí en el condado de Seminole. Eh, somos bendecidos en el condado, obviamente el tornado que se vio, que se vio por el área de Lake Jessup, fue un tornado EF2, pero no hizo daño, eh, era un tornado muy grande, pero no, de, de, afortunadamente no nos hizo daño en el condado de Seminole. Eh, ahora nos volvemos hacia los números del uh, COVID-19 en el condado de Seminole. Eh, hoy en el condado de Seminole hay un total de siete muertes a, a causa de COVID, 334 total infectados. De esos 334, 116 son de hispanos. Tenemos 16 hospitalizados con 22 centros de prueba. También se abrieron unos centros de prueba específicos para alcanzar las comunidades de bajos recursos. Y los resultados están siendo disponibles entre 2 a 14 días. Estos serán sin costo alguno a los residentes. No tienes que tener seguro médico para esto, pero si lo tienes, trae tu tarjeta de seguro para que puedan cubrir los gastos. También tienen que traer su identificación y lo puede hacer sin cita previa. Los centros estarán abiertos de, 2 a 2 de, la tarde, de 10 a 2 de la tarde, 10 a 2 de la tarde, de lunes a viernes. En el primer día, en uno de los centros en Altamonte, hubieron 279 personas que pudieron hacerse pruebas. En el día de ayer, hubieron 280 personas. Y el día de hoy, en Goldsboro, hubieron 340 personas. El de mañana ha sido suspendido hasta el día 30 por la el motivo de lluvia, esperan unos tiempos este, malos de lluvia. T También estamos hablando de, en el condado de Seminole, el director, el presidente de la, de la Junta del Gobierno, eh, Jason Bowers, mencionó donde en el condado de Seminole están buscando cómo eh, hacer y reabrir eh, los negocios de una manera prudente y responsable. Se, se alineará todo esto con el gobierno estatal, las recomendaciones del gobierno estatal, eh, del gobierno federal. Y para asegurar que nuestros residentes comercio, comercios estén preparados para abrir con seguridad. Ahora mismo, actualmente, eh, en el, a nivel estatal, el gobernador de Santes está eh, con, reuniéndose con, una, con unos cuantos eh, capacidades, unos comités que están dando las recomendaciones de cómo y cuándo se puede abrir. El condado de Semerud estaremos monitoreando esa fecha y esas recomendaciones para seguir adelante. Para cualquier eh, cambio, pueden monitorear la página de prepareseminud.org y las cuentas oficiales, eh, oficiales en las redes sociales. También aquí estamos donde se abrió una página nueva, en la página de prepareseminud.org. En el banner de arriba puede eh, darle clic y verá este enlace donde todos los días va a ver los números actuales en el condado de Seminole. También eh, la, las recomendaciones cuando se reciba del gobierno, del gobierno estatal federal, aquí también la Junta de Gobierno del Condado se han reunido y van a tener sus eh, recomendaciones, van a ver de la Junta, Jason Bowers, del de, director de manejo de emergencia, Alan Harris, del alguacil de condado, Dennis Lima, y también del director médico, eh, Todd Husky, Donna Walsh, de la, de la oficina del Departamento de Salud, entre todo, y también de, la, de los diferentes comerciantes de las ciudades y del condado. También tenemos... Eh, que hoy la oficina de manejo de emergencia llevará 67.500 67, máscaras alrededor de 80 asilos de ancianos en el condado, la más grande en la historia del condado de Seminole. Esto le dará 15 días de máscara a cada uno de los residentes de estos asilos. Y también el personal médico se le entregará máscara N95 a todos. Es algo que el condado de Semion sigue trabajando para asegurar que nuestros asilos están cubiertos. También tenemos hoy eh, a Pam Neighbors de la oficina de Career Source con las oportunidades de empleo y los recursos que esta oficina está promoviendo a través de la región y el condado de Seminole. Eh, para información de la página, puede visitar la página de Career Source a www.careersourcecentralflora.com. 
También puede llamar al 1-800-757-4598 de 7 a.m. a 7 p.m. para ayuda. Eh, eh, hubo un 80% de incremento de pedidos de ayuda para empleo en el condado de Seminole. Y esta ayuda incluye eh, ayuda con resumen, con eh, eh, actualizar su profile en LinkedIn y otras cosas. También pueden ayudar a conectar a aquellos que estén ofreciendo empleo actualmente. Este, también en la oficina Career Source se está ayudando para aquellos que están buscando des, eh, llenar las aplicaciones de desempleo, que no pueden hacerlo a nivel de la página de DEO, lo pueden hacer con sus eh, eh, aplicaciones manuales. También están ayudando a los comerciantes, que a más de 300 comerciantes han recibido ayuda de, a, a través del uh, Career Source. <coughs> Ahora mismo Career Source está buscando ayudas temporeras para personas para ayudar en cuestiones humanitarias, choferes y otras cosas que puedan eh, utilizar para llevar comestibles y otras cosas a nivel del condado, puede visitar la página de Career Source Central Forma para más información. También entrenamiento en Seminole State College se continuará y los servicios virtual, virtuales continuarán. Todo esto para combatir el COVID-19 y con eso concluyo eh, mi reporte. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate you uh, sitting in for us today and doing the Spanish version of that. Uh, as you're aware, we have a, a significant Hispanic population here in Seminole County, and we're grateful to have you here, so thank you. Thank the media for being here today as well to help get the message out. Again, uh, I would urge that our citizens be patient. We'll, we'll get there as, just as quick as we safely can and try to get things open back up. And um, if you have any questions, then uh, please uh, ask those questions. We'll get the appropriate person to answer those for you. Sure. I know that basically you guys are trying, your number one priority is to get people who are presently unemployed connect with people who are hiring, but you also do some of the work as far as state unemployment. And we know what kind of complaints that have been coming in. What is your message for the thousands of people that are sitting there with their application, in, but day after day after day it says pending, and very few have really been processed? So, you know, as you said, Career Source Central Florida is very focused on the employment component, and we actually do not or don't have the ability to take claims. We can provide the paper applications, but we actually are, first of all, encouraging people to actually file using the online, the PEGA system, which is now, if you're a first uh, claimant, you use that system, or to use the Connect system. We have seen some change. You know, it's, ha it's getting better. Of course, it's still very frustrating, and, and as as the chairman said earlier, every system is very overwhelmed in this time, and um, in particular, of course, the unemployment system here in Florida. I am encouraging individuals to continue to be mindful and plan and, uh, and use this time to actually do job search or um, reach out to Career Source Central Florida. Don't continue to be frustrated because you can talk to somebody at Career Source Central Florida. We do have individuals who can answer basic questions for the application. Um, it, of course, they cannot file a claim, but they could ask their base, answer basic questions for you. But again, we are supporting the department. We are not the department. Um, and I think it's very important for people to continue to use this time to focus on what can I do, where could I go to work, or could I even go to work in the interim um, like the internships I mentioned, I think that's a really good opportunity. Or, in fact, many of the jobs we're recruiting for are actually jobs that you can do at home in this virtual environment we're in. There are many jobs like customer care centers. We've actually been able to place a number of people at FANUEL, which is the one of the contracted supports to the department. But you are seeing a little bit of the improvement in the log jam. Um, I really couldn't say that specifically. We're hearing anecdotally that people on uh, off hours are able to get into the Connect system online. But I do think it's important that people do focus on either the PEGA system or the Connect system. We do provide the paper applications, but those are going up by the thousands, and it is paper. So I would I would encourage people to use the online system. Okay. So I, 
I know you yeah. said to the to the owners be patient, but the stay at home order for the governor ends on the 30th. You have a lot of business owners that are anticipating opening their doors May 1st. Is right. that a fair statement or not a fair statement? Well, I mean, we're really it's really up to the discretion of the governor. I mean, we believe um, you know the governor is is looking at the welfare of the state and making those decisions appropriately. He has commissioned at least two task groups. Uh, Dennis Lima, our sheriff, is on one of those task uh, forces. And, and it's our understanding that he's expecting those task force to give him their input sometime on Friday. So with that said, um, you know, I suspect he'll take all that information in. He'll take everything under advisement. And, and I suspect he's going to do the right thing. He's, he's going to do what is in the best interest of the people of the state of Florida. Uh, once we have that, then our task force will have to, to look at that, digest it, and see how that fits within Seminole County. To follow up on that, you've had 30% you've had occupancy set standards here for the county. So I'm just wondering, is that something we can expect to see with restaurants and, and tattoo parlors? Are, are you going to, because those are things you guys did put in place. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, one, one of our goals has always been, first and foremost, we have to follow the federal and the state uh, orders. So once we get those, if we see a situation where we're able to put a, an occupancy uh, scenario in place that best fits our community, then we certainly would do so. Uh, if our community is better off or less better off and we can do things under those orders, we certainly will collaborate with all of our partners, but first and foremost, we're more focused on the health issue but certainly we want to get the businesses back open. So if it's a 30% or a 20% or a 40%, whatever that number is, you know, we'll have to rely on our health care providers and our, our medical directors to give us that guidance. But clearly, legally, you guys kind of proved by doing that you kind of went and got more restrictive early on as far as social distancing goes than the state order ever went. That's correct. And uh, I'm assuming you feel like you, you still have that legal authority if you choose what the best fit for Seminole County is to maybe more restrictive even though the state government does one thing. Correct, absolutely. You know, first and foremost, we have to fit under that guideline. But if we see here in Seminole County that there is an imminent danger to doing uh, whatever is decided by the governor, we have to make it fit our community first and foremost. And safety's first. Absolutely. And of course, we're working with our regional partners too in Orange County, Osceola, Lake County because we are somewhat transient through the I-4 corridor and the workforce and et cetera. So if, if businesses start to open up in Orange County, we may have a lot of residents that are going to Orange County to work and then returning back to our community. So we have to continue to talk with our regional partners as well and see how what we do versus what they may do or whether it's something common or close to it. Jay, if you don't mind one more, just the challenges you guys might be looking at, knowing that before Monday, less than 1% of the county has been tested, and by the end of this week, you'll probably have 20% of what has been tested, probably 1,000 people. What are the realizations of knowing that you've had all these people not tested that are now being tested that potentially could follow a domino effect here in the county? Sure. So that, that's, that is a scenario that we know by default at least we're told by our healthcare uh, professionals, that as testing goes up, the expectation is to see positive numbers go up. What we really have to focus on is the hospital loads. How many people are actually going to the hospital? Uh, as you've seen, as Alan Harris described, it's been pretty flat uh, with hospital visits. So our expectations are we have to take in consideration all those parameters, and, and just because somebody's positive, does not necessarily mean they're going to the hospital. So that's what we really got to focus on. We can't afford to overload our, our hospitals and our first responders. So that's paramount, absolutely. Anyone else? Great, thank you all very much. God bless and be safe.